Who better to ask than Congressman Adam Schiff of California? He led the prosecution in the first impeachment trial of Donald Trump. He's the chair of the House Intelligence Committee and author of Midnight in Washington. Chairman Schiff, thank you very much for coming back to the Sunday show. It's good to be with you. Well, Chairman Schiff, you are never far from Donald Trump's mind. Let me play what he had to say about you at yesterday's CPAC, whatever that was. Like Adam Shifty Schiff. Where do you meet people like this? He actually made up a story about my phone call with the president of Ukraine, who, by the way, is a brave man. He's hanging in. He's a brave man. Now, Chairman Schiff, you're used to the you're used to the name calling. But this idea that that phone call with President Zelensky was a perfect phone call is ridiculous, isn't it? It is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, as you say, just a reminder for folks of what that first impeachment was about. Uh, first of all, it's important for people to recognize that Ukraine has been at war with Russia for a long time. Uh, back uh, during that impeachment, there were Ukrainians fighting and dying uh, every day or every week uh, at the hands of Russia and Russian-backed uh, separatists. Uh, and at that time, Donald Trump was withholding about $400 million in military aid to Ukraine in order to extort the same President Zelensky of Ukraine uh, into helping him smear his opponent, Joe Biden. Uh, he cared that little about uh, Ukraine, its future, its democracy, that was willing to, to just use that country, uh, withhold its military support to get that political help. Uh, and, and so if he were president today, uh, you know, again, he would view Ukraine as, as simply, uh, simply a disposable tool in his hand. Uh, to better himself with, with Putin, who he so admires. He would be calling Putin a genius as he is today. And, you know, God help the people of Ukraine if he were the president right now. Talk about how important it is to have the United States, the European Union, and NATO in lockstep in pushing back against Russia. Because that, when Donald Trump was president, that was not assured. No, it wasn't at all. Uh, he was, you know, Donald Trump was uh, busy during his four years denigrating NATO, uh, d isolating us from our allies. Uh, it would have been a very different world uh, if the United States right now wasn't able to rally NATO and Europe together to oppose this Russian aggression. Uh, I, you know, I have to give hats off to the Biden administration, as Jen Psaki was saying, in persuading Europe and our other allies to join in really unprecedented sanctions against Russia, something that you would only have to point to Iran as the only other example, or maybe North Korea, of uh, even stronger sanctions regimes, uh, cutting them off uh, their, their central bank and their other banks, uh, employing the SWIFT uh, system and, and uh, you know, essentially divorcing them from that system with respect to a lot of their banks, uh, the the abundant military financial aid we're giving Ukraine, it's really astonishing how the world has come together to oppose this naked aggression by Putin. Mm -hmm. You know, not to... Another thing that uh, Donald Trump said yesterday in that speech, he, of course, had to talk about the January 6th Select Committee. You, uh, you are a member of that committee. Um, he called you all a, a collection of, quote-unquote, thugs. He accused you guys of persecution. That's a quote from him, of him and his family. He called it a witch hunt. Any of that true? Of course not. But this is a continuation <laughs> of Trump saying that Russia was a witch hunt, that Ukraine was a witch hunt, that January 6th is a witch hunt. Look, he, he takes the position that the election itself was the insurrection mm -hmm. uh, and that the, the January 6th attack on the Capitol was somehow legitimate. In his upside-down world, uh, this is how he views things. But, but these are not disconnected, uh, what's going on in Ukraine and, uh, and Donald Trump's presidency and his attacks on our democracy. We're in a struggle, a global struggle right now with the future of democracy. Mm -hmm. Putin recognizes that as we do. Ukraine poses a real threat to Putin because Ukraine has the potential of being a thriving democracy on Russian borders, giving an example to the Russian people why they don't have to live under the despotism of Vladimir Putin. Uh, Donald Trump was weakening Ukraine and he was weakening the United States on our own democracy uh, in, this, in this struggle. Uh, this global struggle over whether we're going to be an autocratic world or a democratic one. Uh, so these these phenomena are not disconnected from each other. They all go 
to the, the future of our democracy. Mm -hmm. Two quick questions, Chairman Schiff, before I let you go. As chair of the Intelligence Committee, how concerned are you by the news from the National Archives that among the papers taken by Donald Trump from the White House were classified, some of them even mar stamped top secret? Well, it's very concerning. Uh, and the fact that, as is being publicly reported, some of those documents may be so highly classified they may be even compartmented, which means only very small numbers of people can see them, uh, and they can't even describe them, according to public reporting, uh, in a public document, uh, even in a veiled way. Uh, that's very concerning. And, of course, what really leaps out at you is the hypocrisy of Donald Trump for years attacking Hillary Clinton over her yeah. emails. And what does he do? He brings boxes of documents, some uh, at the perhaps highest levels of classification. It just grabs you by the throat, the sheer mm -hmm. hypocrisy of it all. And uh, last question, as a member of the January 6th Select Committee, can you tell us when will televised hearings start? I think they'll start within the next couple months. Uh, certainly, I hope so. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, have a series of hearings uh, that tell the story of what happened on January 6th and what happened in the run-up to that uh, terrible day, all the multiple lines of effort to overturn the election. And there's a, a natural progression that we'd like those hearings to take place in, uh, but we want to make sure that we can get our interviews and our depositions largely out of the way before then, so there's nothing disclosed publicly that would in any way undercut what we're doing in these uh, depositions. Congressman Adam Schiff, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, member of the January 6th Select Committee, thank you, as always, for coming to the Sunday show. Thanks, John.